uh, is going to show you roughly what your outcome is going to be. Hello, welcome. M6 Mark II menu. That's what we're all about today. Two things I've learned this week. One of them is that you should probably not shoot a tutorial or any kind of video about a camera on said camera. Um, it's kind of hard to point at things when you're actually doing them on the camera. Second thing is that my neighbors love sanding, love hammering, and love making all sorts of noise, but only when I decide to hit record. Hammering, <laughs> sanding, sawing, every time I hit record. Please, just, just take a day off. You deserve it. We're all stuck at home. Just, just, just chill out, please. Just so I can record one video. That'd be great. It's taken me all week to get this far. Let's get into it. The EOS M6 Mark II menu. This is just a quick start guide. If you want a really deep dive, follow this link here. Here's a really good one that I found that I liked that went through every aspect of the menu. But I just want to get going with my new camera. I want to get filming. I want to get photographing. So here are a few things I found I needed to change in the menu to get started as quickly as possible. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you turn it on is there's a little button on your uh, on your lens. You want to flick that up and you want to turn that to unlock it. See, now your lens is functional. You can leave the lens cap on. It really doesn't matter because you're mostly going to be in the menu. You're not really going to be doing a heck of a lot more. Next, turn it on. It's now on. You should see a screen kind of like this. Anyway, press the menu button on the bottom there. It says menu. If you can't find it, I don't know what to say. First thing, image quality, raw. You want RAW. On this menu there are several options to shoot in. You've got RAW, C-RAW, which is a compressed version of RAW. Allows you a few extra photos on your memory card. Something you can jump into if you're a bit worried about space, but assuming you've got a decent sized memory card, I wouldn't bother. Just stick to RAW and JPEG. Now the Canon EOS M6 Mark II can shoot in both RAW and JPEG. However, the only time you're really going to be wanting JPEGs is for social media. Now, if you're using this camera and you're sending photos to your phone using the app, you're not going to need to have a JPEG and a RAW shot because it will convert it to JPEG when you convert it or when you transfer it. The next thing you probably want to pay attention to is your drive mode. This is really a menu that has all of your functions for your timers and burst modes and everything like that built in. Again, you're probably going to just leave it on drive on single shot to begin with but it's good to know where that is skipping ahead on page three you've got your exposure simulator this was already set to enable when i got it you can set it to during when you're taking photos but essentially i leave it on enable because what simulation is going to do is it's going to allow the screen or the viewfinder if you're using the evf to show you what's going to be closer to your end result opposed to just an image of what the lens is seeing at that time. Um, it does look a bit strange when you're filming and if you're using a flat profile you're going to see a flat image. That might make it a little bit harder in terms of your exposure and everything like that but generally if you're following the rules of exposing to your shutter speed um, then and you're using an ND filter which you definitely should have then you're probably not going to have a too much of an issue of it in terms of your framing and your exposure and making sure you're not completely blown out. Speaking of flat profiles and neutral and everything like that, uh, the next part of your menu, on page four of your menu, you will find picture style. In picture style, you've got everything in there from your portrait, landscape, fine detail, that sort of thing, monochrome if you wanted to shoot black and white. Although I highly recommend if you're going to do black and white that you tend to do that in post rather than uh, during shooting. That said, if you're shooting in RAW, you can always bring colors back because you'll retain that image detail in the RAW file if you are shooting in monochrome. I have loaded CineStyle for video onto this camera. It's really easy to do. The CineStyle, if you just Google it, you'll find their site. It'll give you full instructions of how to put it on the camera. It's really easy. Once it's there, it's there. However, if you just want something straight out of the box, I have created a neutral profile. That's just using the base neutral profile that's in the camera. And within that uh, neutral, I've just changed the settings to uh, saturation on two, 
and contrast and sharpness all the way down uh, as low as they can go. So setting your neutral profile to no contrast, no sharpness, and just a little bit of saturation to keep some color profile will give you a really nice flat image to shoot from. It's not going to give you the same dynamic range as CineStyle does loading that in, but it is going to give you a bit more flexibility in post in terms of correcting your color, whether you're shooting in photo or video, but specifically for video. Moving on, page six shutter mode. So with shutter mode you've got a choice of either mechanical or electronic. Uh, I leave mine on mechanical. Electronic will be quieter but it does say right here there's a warning. It says fast moving subjects may look distorted, cannot be used with contained shooting flash photography. In other words if you're going to be using a burst mode or anything you must you, you need the mechanical. It's not going to work otherwise. Also you'll see sometimes you get a little bit more of a distortion. So say if a car's whizzing by, you'll get that sort of warped effect where it sort of looks like the car's all stretched out. Mechanical reduces that, whereas electronic, you're more likely to get that. Um, same with if you're shooting video, so you're not, so when you're panning and everything like that though, keeping it into mechanical, you're going to have less distortion or less bendy bits like lampposts and stuff if you're doing panning shots and moving around. Autofocus, I leave mine on one shot AF for photos. Um, also when you're in video it's going to be on continuous autofocus generally anyway if you're vlogging especially. If you're not, if you're doing like a focus pull you might want to turn that off but generally speaking you're going to have uh, you know the option of either pressing the AF button or pressing the, or tapping the screen on where you want it to focus. So you're probably not going to have a huge problem for the odd focus pull. Um, but generally one shot opposed to servo is uh, preferred for autofocus because when you do shift focus, it's not going to jump back and forward as much. It's going to focus on what you want it to focus on. Image stabilization. I find that the electronic image stabilization on this camera, when I'm just holding it out vlogging, does such a great job that I really don't feel like I ever want to turn it off. Um, enhance mode I don't tend to use. Enhance mode tends to crop me right in. I don't like that, but the image stabilization in this camera electronically does such a good job and because it's electronic you don't quite get the same wobbles that you do with an either system so in my opinion if you've got stabilization on the lens those two combined may work well together but uh, as a default the image stabilization make sure that's turned on now the final tab on the main menu is the video settings i shoot in 25p because i'm in a power region but also there's no 24p yet that is coming in a firmware update i believe that's coming soon from what i've heard you've also got on here your sound settings in your uh, movie autofocus settings i've got servo af turned on as I explained before, that's going to give me a more consistent autofocus setting for when I'm vlogging and I want to, this to change quite a lot. However, I would disable that if I was trying to do a focus pull potentially, uh, but for the most part, I leave that enabled. Sound recording, I have switched to manual. Manual sound recording is really important. When I've got my mic plugged into here, you don't want this peaking past the 12 mark. So. Keeping it manual is really important. I did notice using the inbuilt microphone that I won't use very often, but when I have done it, it blows out massively. So having a little bit of control over your audio is going to help you a lot in post. Uh, you do have built-in wind filter and things like that. In here, I prefer to deal with it as manually as possible. I tend to skip right over the play menu. You can have a play with it in there, but to get started, it's not that necessary. Uh, what I do jump to is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection. Again, I mentioned the app earlier. It's really, it's a really great tool because not only can you transfer across uh, pictures to your phone to share on social media pretty much straight away. You can also use it as a remote shutter for taking photos, taking self-portraits, changing things like your exposure and your shutter speed and everything on the app directly remotely to your camera. It's a free remote shutter, so highly recommend you connect your phone to that app and use it. It's a great tool. On the fourth menu with the little spanner, these are the nuts and bolts of your system. The only thing that I've changed, as you could see, was the auto rotate on here. So as you can see, it's auto rotate is set to uh, computer only. If you have it set to camera and computer as it is out of the box, when, it, when you preview a photo looking through your photos on your camera all of your nice portrait shots anything that you've you've shot in a portrait mode 
is going to crop right in like that on the screen. See how you got black bars on the side of here? You don't want those, you don't want those black bars. You want to open it back up. You want to see as much as possible. So it'll actually show the picture on its side so you can see all the detail. Make sure you've got a good shot. On the computer, another story. I want them rotated because I don't want to have to rotate every image that I put into Lightroom. The only other thing is the mode guide. Turn that off. Mode guide is really those, when you first turn the camera on, you get a lot of little uh, tutorial preview screens on the screen. You don't probably need a lot of those, especially if you're shooting in manual. If you like them, great, leave them on. More often than not, you're going to want to turn those off. Moving on to the orange menu. The little camera with the little dots underneath. This is your real fine tuning. This is where you can do that little, basically, this is where you can customize all the things. The only thing I wanted to show you guys, this menu here, where you can customize every single button. The only button I've customized is my trigger button. My trigger button uh, I've set to not only meter, so half pull, pull meter, full pull record on video, so that it you know, does the same thing you'd expect it to do when shooting photos. But also when I'm vlogging, I don't want to be trying to find a button out the back. I just want to press the button, start recording and get going. So that's the only change I make. But you can customize every single button. So customize as much as your heart desires, but I very much doubt you want out of the box to change much. The final menu, and I'll probably do a whole video on how I've set this up, but the final menu is a custom menu. If I jump over here, you will have a menu that looks very much like this. This is your custom menu. This is where you can basically add all the common features. So instead of deep diving into the menu system, say you want to shoot slow motion. So I've got to go into the menu after setting the camera, obviously to video, go down here to uh, where are we? Time lapse or video snapshot. Where are we? Where do I want to go? Oh, here we go. Change that to enable, go through yada, yada, yada. Go back. Change that, change that as well. I don't want that, I want this. I don't want to have to go through the menu a hundred different ways just to shoot a slow motion video. So that's where your custom menu is going to come into play because you can throw that in there. I've got time lapse in here and I've got um, the under picture style. I can just jump straight into it with one menu. It has all the things that I commonly use and that's where you want to use your custom menu. That's the power of that. But I'll do, I might do a whole video. If you want a whole video just on my setup of the custom menu, drop a uh, comment below and let me know because um, I probably would be happy to do that if, if you want it, if you think you need it. But that's the whole menu system. That is the Canon EOS M6 Mark II quick guide to the menu, the things that you probably want to change. Hopefully you found it useful and it helps you get started out of the gate. If you liked this, please hit the uh, subscribe and the like buttons down below. If you would like to see more videos, if I shuffle over here, here's a couple of playlists that you might like to watch as well that I've made of various vlogs and things. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please take care of yourselves, look after your family and stay home. Watch more YouTube. See you soon.